Hello everyone, I'm Fizz and I want to welcome you to Star Citizen, an open world space sim that has been around for years and one I've been following and have finally decided to jump into. Star Citizen is still an early access alpha game, but it's honestly unlike anything I've ever seen before. I've played other games like Elite Dangerous and No Man's Sky and honestly Star Citizen is on a whole other level compared to those games. Now for this series, I am going to be doing something that I did in another space game Kerbal Space Program, where I use ChatGPT4 and a browser extension to allow me to talk directly to ChatGPT and lets it respond back to me in real time using a voice package from Eleven Labs. It will essentially be a real time, fully voiced AI co pilot that I can talk to while playing, and it will know everything about the universe and it will be able to help me with questions that I have or give information about things. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you'll see shortly, so let's just get right into it. Alright, so I'm just going to load up the Persistent Universe option here. So there's two options in Star Citizen right now. There's a Persistent Universe, which is basically like the MMORPG version of the game, where other players um, are playing with you, and you basically just have an open world sandbox to do missions in and do PvP in and that kind of stuff. And then Arena Commander, I haven't personally tried it yet, but it's essentially like an arcade version with different game modes where you can do PvP and, you know, th that kind of thing. But the Persistent Universe is really where it's at personally. Now I've played Star Citizen probably only for a few hours to be honest just to kind of get uh, familiar with the controls and stuff because it's not an easy game to pick up at best. Um, I've already done the tutorial and everything so if you guys want to see all that stuff you know you can check out another video but I'm essentially a, a very new player that has already kind of gone through the initial learning curve so there's still a ton that I don't know but that's kind of the stuff that I'll be figuring out along the way and that's where ChatGPT is going to come in handy for this. So um, I will, I guess, first introduce how this um, whole thing with ChatGPT is going to work. So essentially, the, the voice package that I'm using it, from Eleven Labs, the voice name is Charlotte. So I'm actually going to refer to her as Charlotte. She knows who I am um, and she knows exactly what she needs to be doing in this series. So I'm just going to jump right in and introduce her. Now, the way this works is um, I am using voice commands to trigger and untrigger the conversation. So I'll use a word to uh, to start and stop the conversation with her. It's going to be the same word. And and I'll use another word to toggle on and off the, the actual input so that I can talk to you guys without having her interject. So right, right off the bat here, you're going to see that um, we're going to start in our bed here. And we are in... New Babbage, which is a city on the planet Microtech. So now, I will kind of get Charlotte to explain some of the stuff with the, the solar system here, but let's get her into the conversation. Pause. Hello, Charlotte. I have just spawned into the world here in Star Citizen, and I would like you to introduce yourself and also Tell everybody about Star Citizen and what it's all about, basically. Over. Hello again, viewers. I am Charlotte, an AI co-pilot assisting Fizz on our journey through Star Citizen, a multiplayer space trading and combat simulation game set in the 30th century. Star Citizen is known for its vast open-world universe detailed spacecraft, and dynamic economy. Players can explore planets, engage in combat, trade, mine, and undertake missions. It's a universe of unlimited possibilities, where each player's actions can shape their experience and the broader game world. Our adventures will take us across star systems, through battles, trade routes, and beyond, as we navigate the complexities and wonders of space together. Okay, so while she was kind of talking about that. I was trying to equip this drink here so that I could drink it. Now Star Citizen actually has like a full survival aspect where you know you have to eat and drink and that kind of stuff so I, I was trying to do that but it wasn't letting me hold the actual drink in my hand for some reason and that's kind of like these are some of the little weird janky things that can happen in this game. Uh, so maybe I'll just wait till I get on my ship. Now uh, yeah, there's so much that you know I can tell you about the game that you know she didn't really explain. I wasn't actually 100% listening to what she was saying, but I kind of got the gist. But 
essentially, you know, you're in this universe, and I'll show you the map right now. Sorry, you're in you're in in a solar system in the universe. Now they're expanding the world. They're uh, currently, uh, as as of this video, they have another solar system that they created that is many times bigger than this one, and it's kind of being tested right now, but. Um, this is the system that you have, and even with this system, there's four planets, but there's a ton you can do, uh, from what I understand. Um, and, like, the travel times and everything, it's all, you know, simulated properly. So, like, uh, you'll, you'll see what I mean when I actually go through and um, do it. Now, the controls are, um, are a little bit hard to get used to, but, you know, I've gotten used to them already. Uh, so, you, like, literally have to do everything um, the way that you would expect in real life. And... The actual planets and everything are, you know, pretty much to scale. Um, the travel times and everything, like I said, are, are to scale. There's no loading screens. That's the biggest thing about this game. If you want to get somewhere, you have to actually travel there. I have to call this elevator. This elevator is a physical elevator in the world. I can, you know, choose to go to the lobby. It will take me down to the lobby. And I'm physically traveling through this city, basically. So it, it's it's insane. Like you you, you kind of have to see it to believe it. Now there's some weird janky stuff still. Like the NPCs, they don't actually like respond to you um, for the most part. Like some of them will talk to you here and there, but essentially nobody really cares about who you are. And that's kind of like the charm of of this world. It's not like you know you're like the chosen one and all this stuff. You're just some random person in the world and. You know, you're just kind of doing your own thing. And yeah, there's some weird stuff with NPCs, like they'll just stare at walls or, you know, they'll be standing on chairs, but that's part of the, the, you know, the work that still needs to be done, like this guy over here. He's just kind of standing up on, I don't know what he's standing on. Uh, he's standing on a chair. He's standing on the chair um, that a dude is sitting on. So yeah, you know, th those kinds of things kind of break the immersion, but um, there are a lot of other things that are just really cool about this. Uh, like, you know, here you can uh, you can buy stuff, you can buy food, you can buy, um, you know, water, that kind of thing. So I'm actually going to buy some, so you can click buy this. Uh, this drink here. I think I, I have some on my ship already. So, yeah, I just bought that. Um, and now, I think it's in my inventory. It's not in my hand. Oh, it's in my hand. So now if I want to drink this, I just go down here and press drink. And then my character will actually drink the drink. Now, the thing, like, it's so detailed that if I had my helmet on, I would not be able to drink it. It would tell me that you, you have to remove your helmet to actually drink. Um, and there's actually, um, I, I think there's a way to actually just fully drink the whole thing, but I haven't figured out how to do it, or at least I've forgotten how to do it. So it's just like little things like that, you know what I mean? Um, so now I can just, oops, uh, I can just go down to the drink and just store it and it will put it back in my inventory so again this is like a full-on city now if i want to get to the spaceport it's not like you know other games where you just kind of walk 10 feet and then you're at the spaceport you literally have to take the subway to get there so i'm actually going down into the metro loop right now and i'm just gonna go over here this takes me to the spaceport and the train it says it's arriving in 45 seconds now, I hope my footsteps and stuff aren't too loud, but um, I will adjust that, I guess, uh, when I'm editing, but yeah. So now I'm just waiting for the train here. This is uh, you know, first or the third person view. There's like some camera controls that you can uh, play around with. I haven't actually messed too much with the camera, um, but I know, you know that you can do stuff like this. Um, there's a lot of like cinematic stuff you can do. So yeah, um, I'm just gonna go back in here and yeah so like if you're trying to get somewhere it could take you you know 10 15 Have even 20 minutes sometimes Stand clear of disembarking passengers. there's the train so now i can get in and the next stop is where i want to go and there's also somebody else here there's another player so i think servers right now as far as i know can hold 100 people i think they're going to be expanding that uh in the future but Still, you know, pretty cool the way it is right now. So now the train is actually taking me to the spaceport. And like you can see, again, there's no loading screen. Like there was no loading screen for me getting from this place to the train and going through the city. 
You know what I mean? Like, if a ship was flying overhead, I would see it. You know what I mean? It's just like, it, it's crazy. Um, and like, all that is is the city that I'm leaving, and we're heading to the spaceport, which is over there, which you can see. So yeah, and there's like other things that you know they've added uh, before, where like everything is 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 persistent. So like, if there was a spaceship uh, in space and it was firing a uh, laser cannon down onto the surface, people on the surface would be able to see that and could potentially get hit by it. So just like things like that that you know I've heard about, I haven't seen myself but I've heard about it and it just sounds insane to me um, and then when you get into space and stuff it's just a whole another thing like there's, there's some there's some weird janky stuff that happens here but you know those are those are things that will get fixed eventually um, so now we're at the spaceport station so we're just gonna leave and head over this way come out and again no no loading screens gotta call the elevator wait for the elevator and eventually I called it right yeah I did and so yeah like the elevator has to travel to you it's not just you know already there waiting this person's taking a different elevator um, so we want to go up to the terminal and yeah so now I'm at the spaceport and this is where I can call my ship um, now I'm not gonna explain it you know how the game packages work and all that stuff too much but Essentially, you know, when you get a starter package, you can choose uh, one of the starter ships. And there's that, there's a person <laughs> that was in the other elevator. Um, so I, I actually chose uh, one of the, I guess, one of the more recent ships. Um, and I'll show you which one that is in a second once I get to it. So here's the spaceport lobby. We go up here, up the stairs, and then we can call our ship through a terminal. And this is like, this is the view, that's just, there's the city, like we just came from there. You can see the, the subway tracks, you know, right over here, um, or the, the metro tracks that took us here. Right, so it's just like, the, the way they've done this is just insane. And, um, yeah, so this is another store where you can buy stuff. Uh, I'm going the wrong way. And like, you, like I, I physically got lost many times when I first started. I kind of know my way around here now. Uh, but okay, so here's where we can get our ship. Welcome to the new Babbage Interstellar Spaceport. Welcome to the ASOP vehicle retrieval system. Oh, this is sorry. This is the um, this is Please these are the ground the vehicles. Day. I have to go to the other side. Where is it? Down here. So all these people here, or this person here, is calling their ship. I'm calling my ship. So I have two ships. I have the um, RSI Aurora, which is like a, a you know one of the uh, one of the I guess the ships that you get just by default. And then this is a ship that I got from the starter pack, which is the Drake Cutter. I'm not sure what the story is with the Aurora actually. I I, I don't know if it's like I don't know how the game packages work specifically. Um, I think that's like the base game package you get uh, will come with that one. But if you if you get uh, what, what hangar did this say? Hangar for it. Um, if you if you upgrade to to a higher one, then you I guess you get that ship and the ship that you um, that you bought. So I think this is no, that was not my hangar. <laughs> See, so I wasn't paying attention. Now I have to go back up. Oh, oh wait, yeah, I'm at hangar four. Um, that was kind of dumb. I should have paid attention. So every ship that somebody calls gets spawned to one of these hangars and that's your hangar. Oh, so it's at hangar three, okay. So it says right there. So I gotta go to hangar three. Yeah, so that's handy that it tells you that. There we go. So there's my ship. It's it's not the nicest looking ship, but it's um it's a very versatile ship. It can do you know everything that you would want it to be able to do decently um, so yeah it's uh, it works so like I physically have to get into my ship and some of the ships that you can get are massive they're like football fields in length and, and you can fit other ships like this inside those ships and they're multi crew ships so you can have like you know four people on a ship or more probably uh, and everybody can do a different thing one person can be a pilot. One person can one person can be a co-pilot. 
another person can be a gunner and like you know if you're getting attacked you physically have to run through the ship to get to uh the areas where um you know your your turrets are and stuff this ship in particular you know it's got a bed i can sleep and log out um and that keeps me wherever i was um at the time uh i can log back in um it's a little buggy right now but yeah um it's got a bathroom here we'll open Yeah, there's like a full-on bathroom in here, um, and all this stuff. It's like, yeah, it's just cool. Um, there's storage space, you know, over over in this way, in this direction. Um, I can store stuff like uh, like packages and stuff that I want to deliver. Uh, this is this is the you know the cockpit basically. Um, there's like gun storage over here. Uh, this ship only has one seat, but if you get a bigger ship, you know, you can have multiple seats. This game is is so detail that if you are flying a ship and someone's not sitting down they'll get like flung around and they can even black out if you're you know with the g-forces and that kind of thing okay so now i'm in the ship and if i want to uh get out of here i just put on my flight ready and then i have to contact the um the station to request uh for them to let me leave so i do that to the friends menu here there is you can hotkey this i haven't bother doing that yet but yeah you can hotkey stuff so now this thing's opening up so then i can just kind of lift off here and um, i'll show you in, in this view. Uh, i can put my landing gear up um, this ship actually has uh use key for that yeah like i can i can change the orientation of the thrusters on this ship which is really cool uh, and then i just kind of head out and so generally speaking you know you want to fly in first person but uh, there are times when you want to be in third person. I find it more useful, like landing at night, to be in third person because you Thank can't you. see anything, uh, unfortunately. So yeah, uh, I'm not going to explain how to fly the ship, basically, but I'm using keyboard and mouse. I'm not using uh, a flight stick or anything like that. But so so yeah, so basically, I'm in my ship now. I just left the station. Now you can see, you know, the whole planet is below me. There's the there's the station that I just left, and there has not been a single loading screen. And there's the city. Like I can literally fly to the city, and there, there, uh, over here are, are the tracks that I used, right, to get uh, uh, for the uh, train that took me there. So that's the city over there. So I can like fly through the city. You know, I can land anywhere on the planet. That kind of thing. It's just insane. Like the level of detail. So this ship is not, you know, particularly fast, um, but it gets the job done. So yeah, like. Let's see here, you know, I'm flying um, to the buildings here. Yeah, so I'm not going to spend too much time kind of exploring around here, but I just wanted to kind of give you an idea. So now if I want to go to space, I just literally point myself up and, you know, go up into, this, into the atmosphere and leave the atmosphere basically. Now, I've, I've already used all my boosters, but uh, yeah, I can uh, essentially, so you can see like with Freecam, you know, I'm flying away from the city. Pretty cool. And like, I can see myself in, in the cockpit right there. Um, yeah. So now, of course, there's like missions and stuff you can do. Let me just get into space. Okay, so it, now there there are space stations above every planet. Um, it's recommended that you uh, make that the space station your home, so that you don't have to go through all that when you log in. Um, if you're not, you know, if if you if you haven't logged out of your ship, kind of thing, you can you can uh, you can already be in space. You don't have to go through that whole loop that I just went through. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go to the space station. So I'm just um, I'm, I'm I'm enabling my quantum drive, which is like the uh, hyperspace travel sort of thing in this game uh, so yeah basically I need to go to the map now they're changing all this it's not the, uh, the, the 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 solar system maps not the best right now but yeah I can just kind of zoom in this is the planet that I'm on these are the moons of the planet um, and this is the actual planet here it's like an icy planet uh, 
and the space station that I want to go to is this one. It's uh, Port, Tess Port Tressler, and it's not letting me actually... There we go. Now I can set my route to the space station. Go back here, and it will show up on my HUD, basically. Uh, right there. Now, I can't get there yet because I need to exit the atmosphere, so I'm just going to boost my way out of the atmosphere. And like, you can you can just like while you're flying a ship, you can get up, you can walk around. You know, you can, some ships have like the, the larger ships have other things that you'll be able to do. Like, um, I went on uh, a friend of mine, uh, his ship, his his friend's ship. I went on his ship, and like I, I got lost on that thing. It was so massive, and it has like a pool table and stuff. It doesn't work yet, but like you'll be able to play like pool and stuff on the ship. It's like just crazy stuff that you can do. So now I'm actually just gonna. Uh, use my quantum drive to get from or I lost some frames there uh, so now you know I've left the planet behind now you can see if I turn around there's the planet again no loading screen you know what I mean like this uh, um, when you're in in quantum you can jump out of quantum like if you're going like a far distance you can you can just jump out anywhere in the middle of space like in the middle of nowhere and you know uh, do stuff you know it, like if you get if you get pulled out of quantum, if you get interdicted, then um, you have to basically like, you know, uh, do a dogfight there. So now I'm approaching the station, and I have to request to land here. Now you have to kind of watch your speed. So I'll lower my speed here, and I'm just gonna pull up next to it. I'm still not the best at you know, flying. All right. Uh, <laughs> that was close. All right, we're good. So I'll just kind of spin around here, and now I have to contact the station to land. So again, it's the same thing. I go in here, and go to friends, contact the station. Now, some of you might have noticed um, the amount of uh, credits that I have. Um, I have just over five hundred thousand credits, which is not that one of uh, like. So that same friend um, gave me those credits to kind of get me started. You, you don't, you won't normally start with that many. Uh, you'll usually start with, I think, between five thousand and twenty thousand, and you got to do missions to get those credits. Um, they gave me five hundred thousand, and I kind of did missions to get the other fifty thousand. Um, so yeah, so now they told me that I can land, so that's uh, the point where I can land right there. Um, if I can turn on my lights. Oh, they were already on. Were they? Yeah, there we go. Alright, so I kind of got all twisted around here. Okay, so there's the... there's where I'm supposed to land. Now, I don't... so sometimes it can be a little disorienting. I think they're... I think I have to go swing around this side. Yeah. Kinda have to get used to, like, all the stations and stuff, and, you know, where the landing points are. So there's my landing pad right there. So essentially... Now, again, uh, I have to reset my... Uh, what is it? There we go. Four, there we go. Okay, so yeah, you kind of have to. Oh, I'm upside down actually. <laughs> that happens a lot. Okay, so I'll put my landing gear down and just kind of swing in here nice and slow. And then drop this thing down. And there we go. We landed. So now we're on the station. Landing complete. Get out. I just realized I haven't actually really been using uh, ChatGPT. I've been just explaining everything myself. So let's let's talk to Charlotte now that we're here. Pause. Okay, Charlotte, we've uh, landed on Port Tressler now. Can you tell us a little bit about this station? 
Over. Port Tressler is a space station orbiting Microtech, one of the planets in the Stanton system. It serves as a major hub for travelers and traders, offering a wide range of facilities including ship repairs, refueling and restocking. Additionally, it features shopping areas where you can purchase gear, weapons and components for your ship. The station's proximity to Microtech makes it an ideal starting point for exploration of the planet below known for its advanced technology industries and icy landscape. Port Tressler is not only a gateway to the wonders of Microtech, but also a bustling center of commerce and activity Welcome in its own the right. Okay, so now I can store my ship. So now the ship is stored. So now if I want to get my ship, I can just, you know, call it again like I did last time. But storing it removes it from the hangar, basically. And um, if I log out now, I will I will wake up in a bed on the space station. So I could have also logged out on my ship um, in space, like I mentioned. But yeah, so this is the space station now. So if I go over here to the window, I can see the planet. I just came from there, right? Like, everything is just persistent and um, continuous. And there's like, yeah, just, just it's just so fluid. It's just insane how this all works. So now, again, if I want to leave, I can just uh, go over Welcome here to the ASOC vehicle retrieval system. and grab my cutter. Vehicle select. Your vehicle Number has four. been to the following location. Okay, now the missions. So missions is, you know, a whole other thing. Um, if I want to check out any missions that I can do, Basically, go over here, go to the contract manager. There's racing, delivery, uh, bounty hunter, salvage missions. There's there's tons of different things that you can do. Mercenary missions. So this the game. This game has a full on um, FPS mechanic to it as well, and it's like it's really well done, uh, to be honest. So like I can do this bounty hunter mission, for example, uh, or I can choose a bounty hunter mission, and uh, basically it tells me, you know, these are the contracts. The higher the higher the payment payment the more risky the mission is going to be so this one is basically um uh is from is from the planet crusader so now every every planet in the solar system is basically basically owned by a corporation so basically they are saying that uh oh this is um this is to get th th this is this is a mission that they're using to assess me on whether i can actually um join their ranks so uh maybe i won't do that this one is oh ten thousand. Uh, so bounty hunters guild would like to offer you a chance to earn your system apprehension certification. So this is the same sort of thing. Okay, this is an active bounty here. So Microtech Protection Service is looking for a qualified bounty hunter. Okay, uh, this one might be doable. So let's do this one. Accept. Okay, so now they tell me what they want me to do. I have to search for the target's location. Uh, yeah, there could be other criminals around. Okay, from Bloodshot Ridge. Okay, so uh, it's already tracking. So now I basically just have to go to my ship. So I'll go over here, go to Hangar 4. There's my ship waiting for me. The ramp. Now, another thing that I should mention is, again, this is an open world, you know, PvP game. So, if you're on a planet and you get out and you leave your ship just sitting there and you leave the, the bay door open, someone can walk right in and literally just steal your ship. So you always have to make sure that you close the ship. Um, you can also get attacked by people. Uh, your ship can get attacked by people while you are away from it. So it's recommended that you leave your shields up and uh, you know make sure they don't power down the whole ship. Otherwise, you know your ship will get destroyed very easily. 
Now you can, uh, if your ship does get destroyed, you can reclaim it, and it basically gives it back to you for free. But any upgrades or modifications that you've done to the ship will essentially be lost. So I haven't done any modifications to the ship myself because I'm still new and I don't want to, you know, run the risk of losing a bunch of stuff that I pay for. But yeah, you know, once once I get better at the game and you know I understand things better, you know, I might you know try that out. Um, the other thing to mention is that there are wipes that happen um, on the server because again it is an alpha game when they uh, when they do major updates and stuff they have to wipe um, all of the data sometimes now you still whatever ships that you bought with uh, a game package with real money you get you get back but you lose everything else um, so yeah okay so now I need to go here and that's just the nature of an alpha game right it doesn't happen very often from what I understand but um, it is a thing so um, I think the next one probably, I don't know, uh, it, it's probably going to be when they release the, the new solar system, I'm guessing. I'm not 100% sure though. Okay, so now we can get out of here. The door is still open all the way. Alright, and we're out. Okay, so now I need to... Thank you. Almost hit something there. Guess I need to find the map marker. Uh, it's down. Oh, he's down on the planet. Okay, so, so I need to turn on my quantum drive. Okay, so that's that's the location of the target. Now I can't travel to it directly using um, the quantum drive, so I actually have to fly down to the planet with. Oh, did I? This is the quantum. Oh, yeah, it is. I actually have to fly down to the planet. Uh, to a different location and then fly there. It might actually be on the other side of the planet. I'm not 100% sure. Let's, let's just check the map, see if it's on the map. Okay, I think I can go to this mining facility. Oops, I turned off the. Those weren't showing up before, which is weird. Okay, so let's travel. Oh, it's not. Better yet, there we go. Yeah, I still have to learn, you know, what, what the different markers mean, like when something is on the other side of the planet or that kind of thing, so now we're traveling around the planet, basically. Okay. So this is a mining facility. Now let's see how far away the target is from here. Uh, let's turn this off. Marker's over there. Okay, so he's... yeah, that's not bad. So 300 kilometers. So now I physically have to fly there. As far as I know, that was the best way of doing it. But it could be wrong. Any veterans of the game, let me know if I did that right or if there was a better way to go about it. I'm essentially doing this video for people who, like myself, are not too familiar with the game um, and want to kind of see what it's all about. So, yeah, this is going to take a while. I might actually uh, just skip ahead once I get close. Actually, while we're flying, let's ask Charlotte what, you know, what the best way of going about reaching a target's location is. Okay, Charlotte, we're doing a bounty mission and we have to reach a target's location somewhere on Microtech. Now, I have the the location of the target, but I wasn't able to directly use my quantum to reach them, so I had to find a spot close to where they were and then fly, but the distance is still 326 kilometers away and I'm now flying manually. Was that the best way to go about doing this or is there another better way to reach targets like this? Over. In situations where your target's location is on a planet like Microtech and direct quantum travel is not possible, manually flying to the target is a common approach. However, to optimize your travel time, consider using orbital markers or nearby outposts as quantum travel points 
to get as close as possible to the target's location. Then proceed with manual flight for the remaining distance. This method combines the speed of quantum travel with the precision of manual flight, making it a more efficient way to reach your target. Always keep an eye out for closer quantum able points to minimize manual travel time. Okay, so yeah, there are there are some markers ab above planets. They're they they're called orbital markers, uh, and it says O M on the marker. So I didn't see any, but I didn't look properly. But I feel like this was probably the best way of getting here. I, I don't know honestly, <laughs> but anyway. Uh, so there's some other cool stuff happening that you can see, like there's like condensation on the um, on the on the glass in front of me on the windshield, basically. Um, so there's like you know cool environmental effects and that kind of stuff. So yeah, I'm just kind of getting lower to the ground here. When it's nighttime and if you can't, if you, you wouldn't be able to see much. You have to ping, uh, do a radar ping to see you know um, the land below you and that kind of thing. So to do that, you just hold down the on the keyboard anyway. So yeah, uh, I'm kind of just flying low to do a barrel roll. It's cool. This game would be cool in VR. <laughs> It'd also be cooler with the flight stick. I know flight sticks uh, are less accurate from what I've heard than keyboard and mouse when it comes to like dogfighting and that kind of thing, but uh, for things like what I just did, like a barrel roll and stuff, you have more control. You can um, it's not like an absolute speed when you're when you're rotating, so that's pretty cool. Might have to try that out one day. Okay, I essentially kind of realized that I should have been flying above the atmosphere. That was kind of a dumb thing that I should have realized. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I'm flying above the atmosphere now, and I'm going a lot faster. So I should be able to get there quicker than I did before. Essentially, I mean, think about it. You're flying through a soupy atmosphere. You're not going to go as fast. So, I'm going much faster now, and I will get there. And once I get above the target, then I will re-enter the atmosphere. Makes sense, right? It's common sense. I don't know what I was thinking. Oh, you know what I'll say is, I wanted you guys to see the beautiful landscape. So there you go. All right, so I'm about 45 kilometers away from the target's location. So like, I can just get up out of my seat here if I want to, make sure I'm all prepped up. The ship's going to keep flying, I believe, uh, in cruise control. So like I can uh, just make sure I've got you know my weapons here, yep, all good. Uh, yep, so we can just go back into the pilot seat. and start making our descent, basically. Alright, so here we go. I think we're good now to start coming down. Now I'm not sure if this is going to be on foot or if he's going to be in his ship, but let's see. I'm guessing it's going to be on foot. So I'm just going to dive back down into the atmosphere here. The other thing I wanted to mention about this game is there's like dynamic weather effects and wind and that kind of stuff So uh, and temperature. So if you're on a planet that's um, very hot, then you have to have the right suit basically to survive the hostile conditions. Otherwise, you're not going to survive very long. The game tells you what your survival, uh, I guess, your, your survival chances are in terms of time, uh, how long you can survive in that environment basically. Um, and if it's like really cold, like on Microtech here, you know, the temperatures can get pretty low. Like I've seen, I'm not sure what the, the, the temperatures bottom out at, but, um, you know, I've been, I've been outside in like minus 55 degrees Celsius. I think it was Celsius. Um, or colder than that, probably. So yeah, it, uh, 
and and like the wind can like blow you around. It can blow your ship around. It's pretty cool. Like the kinds of things that they have in the game. Um, so yeah, we're kind of getting close here now. So so yeah, I have to fly that whole way. Uh, it took a while, but I'm here now. And I'm guessing I probably could have done it better, but so let's see what the situation is here. I'm guessing we're gonna have to land and go into the location, but. Let's see what happens. Alright, getting closer. So let's swing around. Okay. Uh, hopefully, there's no turrets or anything. Let's just make sure it's safe. Oh, there's a landing pad right there. I think that's a landing pad. I'm gonna use it as a landing pad. Get out of the seat. Now I guess I should probably have turned off my engines, but it's fine. Open that door, open this door. And uh, the nice thing about this ship is that you can look outside. There's some port, port windows here, porthole windows. Did I actually, did I park in a place where I can actually get out? Place not hanging over the edge of a cliff, that'd be good. <laughs> it almost was. What's this? Nothing. All right, let's get our weapon out. And now we go into FPS mode, basically. Oh, uh, you know what? And I didn't close the door of my ship. See, you gotta do th you gotta do stuff like that. Otherwise, I've seen videos of people uh, who found ships that are open, and they basically just hide in the bathroom of the ship and wait for the pilot to come back. And the pilot takes off, and then the guy comes out, sneaks up to him, kills him, and then steals the ship, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you gotta be careful. Okay, so this guy is. And the other thing is, the AI in this game is not the greatest. Like, these guys are mercenaries, I think. I don't know if they're actually gonna get mad at me or anything. They don't seem to care that I'm here. All right. Oh, wait. Where is he? Oh. Huh? Oh, this is him. Okay, buddy, you need to move. Is that you? I want to make sure I kill the right person. I don't want to get put in jail or whatever. Uh, he doesn't even care. <laughs> this guy does. But I'm not going after you. You dead? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, so that was kind of lame. Oh, I'm getting shot at him. Oh. They're shooting somebody else. Who's shooting? I want to loot him. Oh, God. Where are those shots coming from? Okay, you know what? Not worth it. Is, oh, these guys. Uh, I'm almost dead, dude. Okay, I need to use my med pen. Thingy. Uh, oh, I pressed the wrong thing. I. Where is it? This. Uh, he himself. Uh, I didn't do it. Oh, and I'm dead. <laughs> I'm incapacitated. Hold backspace to die and revive at Brentwood Care Center. Hold M to activate a rescue beacon. Oh, yeah, see, I'm not going to do that. 
I think I'm going to have to just die. I did complete the mission, so it's fine. Um, I didn't get the med pen out in time. I, I pressed I pressed to use it. I don't know if I'm going to just be able to get up. I pressed to use it, but I had my gun equipped, so I think that's why it didn't let me. Okay, let's just, it's fine. Let's, uh, let's just die. Backspace. Okay. I did do the mission, and I think you get you get credited right away, so it's fine. My ship, uh, I can call it back. I don't know. I didn't. I don't think I had anything major on there. I can go back to get it if I want to, but I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think I had anything major on there. Probably like a shotgun and some other stuff. Okay, so now, uh, oh, I guess I could, I could, this is a good way of showing you how this works. So when you die, you end up back in the hospital of the place that you, uh, oh, you know what? I lost all my armor and stuff. That's the problem. Okay. Yeah, so this is the hospital. I'm gonna have to go back and get my stuff, I think. Thank you for visiting Feel better, save more. Okay, so, yeah, and I'm like fully on, like fully wearing like a hospital gown and stuff. Yeah, so this is another one of those weird things that happen. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get my stuff back and then um, I want to show you guys one more thing before I end here. There was only one. There's one other thing that I wanted to show, and uh, that was just how the uh, how the quantum travel works between planets. So I, I wanted to show you guys some of the larger ships. Maybe maybe I can do that. Uh, let's let's go to one of the other planets first. So I had to get to a um, to a marker and then go from there. So Hurston is 38 million kilometers away. So I'm gonna go into quantum here. Now we're traveling to Hurston. And yeah, so this trip is gonna take a bit, but like I said, to get up get out of the ship, or sorry, not out of the ship, <laughs> that would be bad. You can get out of your chair and, you know, walk around and do whatever. Oh, now it's showing me my body again. What? That's annoying. Yeah, so you can sit down. And 
basically take in the sights. Alright, so we're making our approach to Hurston here. I actually got up, <laughs> went downstairs, grabbed uh, grabbed some food, came back up, ate a bit, and we're still not there. We're almost there now. <laughs> it's insane. Like, and this isn't that. That wasn't even the, like, oh, I mean, that was one of the further further trips that you can take. But it's definitely not. There are longer trips, I think. And it depends on the on the, the components of your ship too, like you can get better quantum drives and stuff. But um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. So we're going to be making our approach here, you'll see the planet come into view. There it is. Alright, we're here. So now we want to actually land at the city, which is Zoom into my location. Lorville, I believe it's called. Put that right there. Okay, it took a little bit, but managed to do it. <laughs> the map, not it's not the greatest, unfortunately. Alright, so now we go like that. And we go to the marker, which is actually over here. It's really not. I was actually pretty much right over it, so now we just have to calibrate and go. It's actually, it's actually not right there. Let me zoom around. Couldn't find the planet for a second. <laughs> Pause. Charlotte, we have approached Hurston now, um, and we're about to land in Lorville. Can you tell us a little bit about this planet and the city? Over. Hurston is a planet within the Stanton system, known for its extensive industrial landscape dominated by Hurston Dynamics, a manufacturing giant that produces weapons and ammunition. The planet's environment has suffered heavily from industrial pollution, resulting in a variety of biomes that are harsh and degraded, but still hold a rugged beauty. Lawville, the city where we are landing, serves as a major hub on Hurston. It's a corporate-owned city with strict laws enforced by Hurston security. Lawville is characterized by its towering buildings, industrial facilities, and a dense urban center surrounded by vast, open mining areas. The city is divided into several districts, including a business district, residential areas, and the spaceport where we'll be landing. It's a testament to the might of Hurston Dynamics and the cost of unchecked industrialization, offering missions, trade opportunities, and insights into the lives of those living under corporate control. So yeah, you could see as we were descending there that there was a lot of smog and pollution because as as Charlotte said, this is um, it's like a mega city type type, type thing. Uh oh, oh yeah, there's a no fly zone here. I gotta get out of here. Yeah, there's some things that you gotta be mindful of. Um, 
think I read that, that there's like a no-fly zone in the city, but you actually have to land in the city, so I'm not exactly sure what the deal is with that. So let's see if I can actually contact the landing thingy here. This is actually bugged down here too, I can't see. Uh, nope. So I actually, oops, I actually need to figure out where... Oh, it's over there, I think. Spaceport. Why? Why is there a restricted area so close to the spaceport? I don't understand. Okay. Should be able to contact them to land now. Get it? Yep. Alright, so this this is like a a top loading sort of landing pad, I believe. Let's see. Slow down. Uh, where is it? Oh, it's over there. Okay. Oh, oh, my view, my view is messed up. <laughs> okay, it's got to be an easier way to fix that. Uh, okay. Landing gear down. Dude. Is it still not? Oh no, that's fine. So yeah, I gotta get drop in here. There is an auto land feature, but I, I don't really like to use it. So I can, I, can, I guess I can kind of do that to kind of show off the. Uh, ships, components and all that. There we go. Alright. Get out. And let me see if I can quickly show you guys some of the other ships. You can buy ships here. And some of them are absolutely massive. Kind of crazy.
watch your step when disembarking the train. Alright, so I just did a little bit of uh, traveling around Hurston. I've never actually gone into the subway or anything like that, or the transit. Um, so I just had a little bit of footage there without any commentary, just to kind of show what the environment is like over here. It's very different, of course, than what you saw over at uh, Microtech. So this is actually the area where you can buy ships. Uh, it's called New Deal. and this is one of the, the ships that you can buy, actually, if you want to, but I'm going to show you some of the bigger ships, which are actually cooler uh, to look at for someone who, if you've never seen the game before, I was actually pretty uh, impressed with the size, and these aren't even the bigger, like, these aren't even some of the biggest ships. So, check out some of this stuff over here. And the cool thing is, is you can actually go inside and, like, check Come these out. In. Don't be shy. We're all family here. So, like this one, for example. Why don't you step on over to our terminal if you're looking for additional info? I can remember where the entrance to it is. Okay, I guess I can't get in this one for some reason. Thought I could. This is the Aurora. This is the one. This is the other ship that uh, that I own, or that you know, I guess everyone owns. There's a little bed back here. Yeah, pretty cool. I could have sworn you could get in um, the other ships. There's a dude running around with no clothes on. <laughs> and then some of the, a uh, couple of the bigger ones that are on this side. My frame rate's not that great in here. Yeah, this one I think I can go in. Why is it even letting me? Maybe, maybe I wasn't supposed to be able to go in last time. I don't know. Oh wait. Oh, yeah. go down. Oh, I'll go down. Okay. I messed up. There we go. Oh, yeah, I don't know why I wasn't able to get into the other one, but probably just missed how to do it. So this, yeah, this this is the constellation Phoenix. This thing is. Um, Quite massive. And oh, there we go. It's got its own elevator and all that. So lots of beds, you know, for people to sleep. There's a um, pilot, and uh, let me slow, make my speed slower. Uh, there's a pilot seat, co-pilot seats. I think my, um, my turning is also a little bit too sensitive. And then back here, there's some other cool stuff, like a little seating area, a little uh, meeting table, a bar. <laughs> it's crazy. Sure, what this is. Another bedroom. Oh, man. That's cool. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's one of the bigger ships. <laughs> it's uh, quite impressive. And then over here we've got another one that's quite big. The Hammerhead. Now I'm not gonna go into this one because this video has gotten quite long. Um, I'll just do a quick walk around of it. While I'm doing that I just wanted to thank everyone for watching and 
Um, if you enjoy this type of content, let me know. Uh, again, I'm just experimenting with this channel. Um, definitely uh, want to do more stuff like this and have more creative freedom and not really alienate people on the Roblox channel. So um, yeah, appreciate your support if you're over here watching it on this channel. And we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, everybody.